let's get started so for starting i will need my larger size of the crinoline and i'm going to cut out about 28 inches which i've already measured and cut out so you can also do same then you measure about 28 inches depending on how large you want the base to be so this as you can see i've measured and then it's about 28 inches as you can see all right so once you're done with that you see there is um so when you are done with that you see that there's always a thread at one side of the crinoline so what you do is that you pull the thread out of your crinoline yes you pull it out you want to use it for today so i'm pulling it out and when you are done pulling out what you are going to do is you're going to tie the ends of the crinoline so you tie this end you put you turn it on each other like that then you make a small notch here like this then you use your thread and needle to tie it up you know crinoline is rubber and by its nature it is very slimy so if you don't take care you are going to so you make sure you have tied it enough then you sew you tie then you sew when you do that you make sure that you have really really secured the ends so tie and so you tie then you sew just as you have seen me done i'm doing it again to secure its ends and to make sure that it is fully fully secured then i will tie it up so when you are done you can cut it and then apply some uhu gum so it's secure so you can have dual threads so that you tie both ends with the dual needles and thread so that you don't have to cut and tie and make a knot before you come and sew the other end so i've really secured it so i'll cut my thread then i'll trim the edges off yeah, so i'll trim the edges off and then i'll quickly apply uhu to the edge so that it doesn't fray you know crinoline frays easily so i'll just apply some small uhu so that it doesn't free i will allow it to dry small so now that that is done we are going to form we're going to so i'm going to form running stitches so for running stitches you don't need a lot of skills to be able to form a running stitch so you can see we already have our arc so two sides have been tied so what you have to do is that you join the two ends together this end and that end you join it together then you start sewing using your running stitch so you do it just as i'm doing it you make sure you sew at the extreme end of the crinoline just as i'm doing because you want to have at least a little larger brim if you sew it in the middle the brim is going to be smaller but because you want to have a larger brim we are sewing it at the extreme end so while you are sewing, you make sure you work with your thread. You take it so that it doesn't form a knot in the middle. If it does form a knot in the middle, it makes the work very, very difficult to do. So as you see me do, you can equally do so. So it depends on the length of your thread. You drew for a while, then you pull. You keep on sewing till you get to the end of the other knotted parts if you don't take care you prick yourself so just as i'm doing you are also doing you make sure there are no knots in the middle or at any point of the crinoline if you don't take care and then there's a knot you have to undo or unpick everything and do again so you take your time then you do it well so thank you like i said thank you so much for the love the comments i'm grateful and then we are improving you are posting pictures you tell your friends you also subscribe to our channel and then we all go together Thank you. Take care of yourself. So be experimenting with this. Use different colors. You do it and then you are good to go. So we are almost at the end 
of our sewing so once i'm done all what i have to do is to pull them together and then i'll form the base great so as you can see it has all been sewn with my running stitch so all that is left for me to do now is to pull it from one end to the other end so as you can see me pull you see as you are pulling then it is even forming the shape already so depending on how big or how wide you want your brim to be that is how you are going to pull your crinoline so i think it's enough for me so i'll just put this one two on top and then i will sew it down i'll make sure i will tack it down so that i'll have at least this size for the brim so when you have enough if it was larger then join it together like this so now you can sew in between so that it takes the shape or the form you want it if you leave it and you don't sew it it will go back to its original stage so yes at least i know now i have secured it aha uh -huh. so now that i've secured it i can sew from one side to the other side from the opposite end to the other end to make sure that the middle part is fully secured Good. so that's how it looks now and i'm not going to cut the thread i'm going to use it to fit the other part so this is how it looks now very beautiful and simple so when you are done with this you put this one away then you can work on the rose so to form a cinnamon sorry to form a crinoline rose that one so you need the same size of the crinoline but this time you're going to reduce the length so this one um the length is 18 inches so for 18 inches you measure okay so this one cries about 20 inches yes but sometimes you can cut it it depends on how large or how small you want the rules to and once again i am going to pull out the thread so we are making a, a, a crinoline rule so this one too you follow the same process as we did to the other one we end we join the uh, ends we tie them up then we run we make a running stitch okay so you follow the same pattern just as we did to the base so you pull now we are forming the rules so we pull together so after yes now that it's done like this what you have to do you see one side is opposite facing you up like this the other side is this way so if you want to form the rose what you have to do is you turn it at the other side if this one is following this angle you see this angle it goes this direction you can leave it in then you turn it on again because you want to form the bud inside after you have done that then you turn this thing around you turn the rest of the crinoline around this way this way we hold this one down this way this way it comes back again good hope you've seen me do it well so you can also do it so now that that one is done you pull you pull you pull all what you are already like doing is to pulling 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 you form your rows then you sew it down so that's how the crinoline rows is formed i'm repeating it once you've got into this section what you have to do Yes, this is the angle it follows you turn it the other way the other way or the other side of it you turn it in like that good like that then in like that again so that you get the the bad the one is a bad it has formed the bad already so the excess or the rest is the brim so what you have to do now is to pull pull it so that you can wrap get them together so once you are done pulling and then you've gotten them together all what you have to do is to sew and then hold it down good so you turn right at least now i know that i have gotten to this edge and with this I'll quickly sew it so that it doesn't slip off my hands again because it's very slippery. So you sew it, then you have formed your crinoline rose. 
So for this project, you need three of these roses. Yes. So be able to arrange it nicely. So you need three of them like this. All right, so I have three of these roses. So I'm going to put these ones to aside and then now work on the mini rings that were on top of the, the crinoline. So you tie it, you make sure that with everything you do with crinoline, you tie it because if you don't take care, all your work will be in vain. So tie it and make sure you have really, really secured the ends and that it is not going to fray again so i'm good to go so now that we have done with that we pick the two inches size of the crinoline and we are going to measure eight inches and 12 inches that is going to help us form our crinoline rings or our crinoline mini bias so with this i'll measure up to my eight inches 8 inches as you can see 8 inches then 12 inches all right so for my 8 inches what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn it on meaning i'm going to turn it on like this and then over it again to the eight point of the 8 inches so this is my first loop or this is my first hole so when i'm done with that i'll come again to where i measured from this side to my 12 inches and then i'm going to turn it over i'll turn it over and then i'll create double loops as you see me do um, so i'm creating double loops you can create triple or quadruple loops it depends on how you want it to be so i've created my double loop take your time you arrange it well then you are good to go so that's how our double loop also looks like and that is how it is done so when you have gotten it like this what you have to do is to tie the base tie it and then you sew it down you cut the excess off then you tie the remaining so you secure it very well so that it doesn't fray just as i'm doing you sew and then you make a knot at least you know that you have well well secured it and then it is not going to fray so that's how you also form the double loops for the crinoline so when you are done you cut off the excess you also need five of these so with this now we can arrange our beautiful crinoline so five of these and then three of our roses all right so now we are going to do with our arrangements since we still have our thread on we are only going to be sewing it down so you pick your roses you arrange them neatly how how you want them to be or the directions you want them to face then before you start sewing you make sure you have arranged them and then you have seen how it's going to turn out to be before you start sewing but before you do that you first have to put your rings at the back and each ring that you put at the back you sew it down so that it doesn't change position or it doesn't move you arrange them then you sew them down so you do it just as i've been doing it so i'll pick one then with the thread and needle which is already inside the base i will just sew it So you do the same to the rest of when you sew all the five pieces together. Yes, so so far you still I'm still sewing, so you also sew like this. So so far so good. So now that this side and this side you can see that every part is well sewn and secure. Then I'm left with the last shoes. For the last shoes, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to apply enough of the uhu gum at the base. Enough of it. I won't have to sew it. I'm just going to apply enough of the uhu gum at the base. Allow it to dry. And then I'll fix it at the remaining 
side so just allow it to dry and then you also fix it as well the other is you can equally sew it if you have flowers and feathers you can use them as embellishment but for this one i just wanted to use only the crinolin so while i'm allowing it to dry i can also work at the base meaning i can finally uh, make my final notch and tie it down and then i will cut the thread because now i'm done with all the sewing that i need to do so once i cut the thread off then i can attach the felt at the back and then the pin to to secure it so that the person can wear it so while you wait for this thing to dry small you can arrange this part and make a beautiful thing so this is how it is done so once it's dried enough so i will just insert it beautifully and then press it down a little just to make sure that it is well and it's well secured there so as you allow it to dry small you can turn and then work on the back as well so pick your felt then you cover the base as well so this one through this part if you want now that everything is done you can equally trim this part off but once you trim the part off you use your uhu gum to secure that side so it's either you apply the gum at the back or you apply it on your felt directly and then you fix it there all what you have to do is once you apply it you make sure it dries small then you attach it to the back then you pick your pin then you pick you cut a small of the felt paper just like this something like this to help you secure it so it's dried enough so i'll just attach it to the base to cover the base and all the sewing that has been done there beautifully and neatly we have different types and colors you can use so i decided to use the white one so once i'm done i'll fix my pin and then i'm good to go so with my pin too i'll apply some glue allow it to dry small then i'll attach my pin when i open up the pin i'm going to apply some small glue on this one to allow it to dry small so when i open up the pin i'm going to insert that one to in the middle to help the pin get stuck or stable so that it doesn't shake and move good so just like this yes yeah, something like this just to give it more fair to make it more firm and more secure and then you are good to go you can wait and i can see that our crinoline has turned out beautifully beautiful beautiful thank you for watching thank you so much you are coming again another time please keep your comments coming keep your suggestions coming and then you continue so see you in our next video thank you so much